Welcome to the Jeff Mayweather Radio Show. My name is Jody Cohn, and I'm joined, as always, by Jeff Mayweather. And also, we have uh, Carla Jays joining us right now. Uh, Jeff, welcome. How are you doing tonight, and Carla? I'm good. Doing great. Good. How's it going? Great. Good. Well, we have our uh, we have our first guest here already. We're not going to waste any time. Uh, uh, joking around or talking, we're going to bring him right on. We are, are honored to be joined by one of the, the greatest boxers of all time, uh, uh, Beast and Assassin, uh, multiple-time world champion, IBF champion, WBC champion, uh, ring champion. Um, just totally honored to have him on the show, Larry Holmes. Larry, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, thanks. How you doing, Jeff? Good, good. How you doing? All right, great. We had a little confusion, so thanks so much for joining us late there on the East Coast, Larry, especially during the debate. I know you were watching that, so, so appreciate yeah, you taking okay. some time with us. That's all right, Jody, anytime, no problem. All right. Now, Jeff, uh, you know, first before we get into Larry, let's, let's get your thoughts. Um, I know you're a big fan of, of Larry's. We, we've spoke before about, you know, who are some of those underrated um, fighters and, and that kind of thing, and, and you know, you, you've always spoke highly of him. So give us your, your opinions on Larry as a fighter and what you thought about him. Well, I mean, I think that... Um, Mary was a fighter that never got his just dues. I mean, I thought that he was probably one of, he definitely one of the top five fighters in, five, 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 top five heavyweights in the history of boxing, uh, I honestly believe. And I think that, you know, the problem with, with Larry is that he came right up to Muhammad Ali was one thing, and then the other thing was that, you know, he actually defeated Ali, and he defeated him in a, in a merciful way, and, and people kind of hated him for that as well. Yeah, you know, Larry, when you were here at the WBC convention a couple weeks ago, I, I got a chance to ask you about that. I asked you if you thought that, um, you know, it, it seems like now you, you you disagree with me, but you get so much credit for being so underrated. It almost seems like, to me, like you're actually finally getting the credit you deserve, but you disagree with me. So, so explain me a little bit, you know, as far as what you think, how people look at you now. Well, you know, people look at me as a champion that those who remember me, those who followed my boxing career, they look at me as one of the great fighters. Uh, and I say one of them because, you know what, I never get into <clears throat> who was the greatest fighter of all time. I never get into that because you have so many great fighters with the Joe Lewis, the Rocky Marciano, the Dempsey's, and the Muhammad Ali's, and the Joe Frazier's. And there's so many of them, so I never try to put myself anywhere. But when someone asks me who you think was the greatest fight, fighter of all time, you know, I say me, of course, you know. But again, I don't really, you know, I'd really just be saying that because I think highly of myself and what I did. But all the guys that I just mentioned, man, to me is one of some of the great fighters, and I don't want to be able to take, I don't want to take anything away from what they did because anybody who steps in that ring and throws throwing punches and taking punches. Uh, they're great to me, you know, because it's, boxing is not an easy sport to do. You know, Jeff had mentioned, you know, your, your fight with Ali there. Do you think, you know, even though, you know, it, it's boxing, you have to you have to win the fight, and you, like you said, you actually did it in a merciful way, but do you think by so thoroughly dominating someone that to so many people was, you know, the greatest ever, do you think that kind of ultimately hurt the way people viewed you as a fighter? Well, it's kind of hard to go up against a legend. Muhammad Ali was a legend. He was a people's champion. And, you know, so, you know, I know was, uh, I was in a no-win situation. I win, they say, the old man, he's washed up. If I lose, they say, well, I never had it from the beginning. So, you know, I took the easy way out. You know, I go on and beat him anyway and let people form their own opinion. <clears throat> but, you know, he was a great man, you know, and, and I, I did what I had to do just like he did what he had to do. Uh, when he was fighting, uh, so you know, I, it's no hard feelings. The man is one one of the great fighters, as I said. I loved him and I thank him for the opportunity, and uh, I'm glad that I didn't hurt him, and I'm glad he didn't hurt me. Now, Jeff, what were your thoughts at the time on the fight? I mean, I, I know you were you were active at the time, so what were your thoughts on it? I mean, when I actually when I actually watched the fight, um, to be honest, I thought you know Larry. What Larry did was actually, you know, commendable because, I mean, it was almost like he knew that, you know, that Ali didn't have it. And rather than punish Ali, he actually asked the ref to please come and stop him. 
you know. And so, I mean, if, if anything, you know, I mean, you got to have respect for, you know, because, I mean, obviously he show, he even showed respect even in challenging the men as opposed to, you know, like a lot of fighters, I mean, you know, they would they would go ahead and, and punish him, you know, and Larry didn't do that. Hey, Jeff, you know how it is. You know, you got a guy surrender. You got a guy hurt. You don't want to kill nobody. We're not mercenaries. We just right. want to try to make a living and make some money. We don't want to kill nobody. We don't want to hurt right. nobody. And we don't want to get hurt ourselves. So we go out there and we do what we have to do. We say we say our prayers. I did anyway. God, don't let me hurt this man and don't let this man hurt me. Let us have a good fight and let us both be able to get out of here safe and sound and, and enjoy enjoy our, our victories or our loss. Uh, that's what I did and that's what I think a lot of fighters do because we always pray. We always I see all the fighters that I ever see always say that little prayer. And that's what I think gets us out of that trouble that we go in. God helps us out. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, one of the uh, one of the great to me one of the greatest moments at the, the WBC gathering was when you sat down next to Mike Tyson and interviewed him. And uh, you know, you, you'd asked him about, you know, you, you said, uh, you know, why'd you have to beat me so bad? And, and he commented because you you did it to Muhammad Ali. Um, you know, a lot of people draw parallels to that, but. But the difference, I think, was that that was Ali at the very, very end of his career. But, you know, you you know, you know, never captured an, a, a title again. But you, even after the Tyson loss, you had, you know, quite a good run after that. Only lost a couple times to, so, you know, the top guys, Holyfield and McCall, you know, people like that. So so do you think that's a fair comparison that people make the parallel? And, and, and what did you think about Tyson and, and, and that kind of thing? Well, I tell you what, man, they're going to always do that. They're always going to say what they would do, what I should have do, what I couldn't do, what I could have done. I don't really care, man. You know, I'm just happy that I got out of the game healthy. I'm happy that I got the opportunity to be with them guys. I'm even more happier that I got to see Mike Tyson, get the chance to interview Mike Tyson, and then meet all the champions that were there again. Because those guys, we all coming together, and uh, we all do the same thing. And I'm sure that it's always good to see these guys, man. I mean, I mean, I'm like, I get all, I, I'm, I'm more of a, a, a fan than anybody, uh, probably, because I ask everybody for an autograph. I send my wife out with the gloves, and we get the autographs and stuff like that. And I come back, I'm home, and I brag about it. I got a TV show of what the heck they're thinking. I put it on my TV show, and I show everybody the gloves and stuff I got, the people I meet. I put the pictures on that we take. And, you know, and that's really what it's all about, man. You know, we we enjoy each other, man, and because, I mean, boxing is so hard and fighters are seem like they it, it's a lonely job, you know, because everybody seems like they just want to be around you because you're the champ, be around you because you got some money and they want to get some of that out of you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, it's great to see the guys, man, and I just, I love it. I hope we can continue to do it. Well, the one thing, you know, that I, I know, sir, and I, and I kind of want to ask you because um, how you felt you were portrayed because, you know, everybody, or I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people said, you know, oh, was Larry Holmes, was he mean and that kind of thing. Everybody, and, and I tell them, you were absolutely the life of the party there. Of all the guys there, and they were all great, but you were the one that was joking, you were singing. I mean, you were having a great time, and you and you and, and Hearns and Fennec, I, I think, were the ones that were most successful to everybody as far as being there from the beginning to the end. So do you feel that, you know, going back, I know there's problems with the Cooney fight and that kind of thing, do you feel that, that perhaps the media portrayed you in a negative light and that gave so many people a false, uh, you know, impression of the way you were? Well, you know, I wasn't one, and I wasn't the one that they really wanted to pay too much attention to. you got to remember, now, after Muhammad Ali left, that they had guys like Tommy Hearns. Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberta Duran, you know. You had all the, you know, like Mayweather's out there, you know what I'm saying? We all was out there, man, and um, I, and, and so many of us. So, you know, I, I, they didn't know who to pick, so they were just in with everybody. So I don't care, man. I, you know, I never worried about that. You know, I, I look at my, my boxing gloves every now and then and see the names on them, and I go back and remember some of them. I got a lot of tapes on a lot of fighters that I watch and we talk about them and I have them in my club. And, you know, that's what it's all about. I don't really care about how the people remember me. Uh, I just want to live happy every after. That's why I stay in this little town called Eastern Pennsylvania because it's small, 26,000 people. I can walk down the street and have my fun and, 
And if I want to get drunk, I go to my club and get drunk, and then I finish and come home. <laughs> so it's really nice, man, to do that. And, and, I, and of course, we do need a break because we're human beings too, you know? Uh, what did you think of, this is actually for you and Jeff, um, we talked a little about this last week with Jeff, but, you know, as far as a pension fund, I mean, obviously there's such a need for it. Um, you know, a lot of fighters obviously, you know, haven't been able to be successful after the sport. So it's something, you know, I, I know they've tried to start before, but it's something you think that they can carry on at this point and, you know, and explain the need a little bit for it. Well, I think they can go on, I think, but you need somebody they're going to be honest and fair and put the money where it's supposed to be and let the money make some interest so that uh, you can continue to do that pension plan instead of paying the WBC a whole lot of money and, and the promoters a whole lot of money. Let them pay a part of that pension too. Don't just take it from the fighters that fight the fight. Take it from the promoters that promote the fight. Take it from them uh, the, because they get the television and they get the money too. It's, it's a lot of money. And the pension plan can be decent. And uh, I don't know how much money they can give because I'm not really into the finances that way. But I think it would be a little bit of something that's better than a lot of nothing. That's the way I see it. I think this is a good idea for the pension to come up. It's too late for me now. Old, I can't. I'm 63 years old in a couple of weeks, so I won't be able to get a pension. If I do, it'll be two dollars, and then the pension will end. But it's okay for the young guys to coming out. Mm. Right. Jeff, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, basically, you know, I shared my thoughts before. I said the one thing about the pension thing, there's always, there's been, you know, various organizations trying to, you know, to create a pension plan, but a lot of them was just scams. There's a lot of them that a group of people that actually just took took money that was being, you know, given to them and did what they wanted to do with it, you know. But like I said, the other thing is, is that it's also very hard to, you know, to pinpoint, you know, a way of giving, you know, boxing a pen, you know, boxes a pension because, like I said, I mean, what about the guy who comes out, uh, comes out the Olympics or something, is probably a great fighter, and probably has a great bright future, and everybody thinks that, and he goes out there and get knocked into a coma. You know, uh -huh. I mean, do you do you take care of him? And then you have other guys that have, you know, a long, long illustrious careers. And, you know, and they make tons of money, and sometimes they go broke, you know. And so, I mean, there's got to be some type of way of mandating what is the specification for even getting anything on, from the pension. I mean, do you have to be a champion? Do you have to be, you know, um, a certain number of fights? I mean, something has to be mandated because it's this. You know, there's really no ground rules to as where and who you can help, you know, because just because a fighter has a name doesn't necessarily, he needs to be helped. You know, when you have a guy that, you know, that's actually poor, that's probably never going to do anything and becomes an opponent, you know. I mean, do you take care of him the same way you would take care of a world champion? So, I mean, it's, it's just so difficult to, to specify, you know, where where the money goes to and who, who you know, who gets it. And that's well, why you I know what I think, what I think, what I think should happen on a lot of this stuff, you know, they have a policy, they have an insurance policy. And, you know, the more money you pay into that insurance policy, then the more money you can grab out of there if something like that happens. But, you know, you're always allowed to, when you get busted or whatever, you can always sell some of that insurance policy back to the company and you'll still be able to eat. But but I think all fighters should, and I had insurance on myself when I was fighting. And, you know, and but they didn't really give me the insurance that I really wanted because <clears throat> I was into the a, a fight game, a dangerous game. But I think this would be something put together as far as fighters so that he can take, um, uh, get some insurance. I think that would help. But, again, I'm just talking, and the, the, the know it all, the, the bees uh, got to do this. I, you know, I wouldn't know how to start it or do it. I just know how to try to take care of myself like I'm doing now, you know, in my family. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you think they should do with, like, fighters, um, you know, I won't mention any names, but, you know, obviously the ones that were very, very successful, but they weren't able to manage it correctly. 
um, you know, do they get the same kind of, you know, the, the pension fund where, where they're drawing money based when they shouldn't need it, have they been able to manage their money correctly? I mean, do they get the same kind of, um, you know, what do you do with folks like that? Well, you know, uh, because they put so much money, you're allowed to draw down on what dollars you, that you get, and I think that will, you know, be efficient if they need a little bit more, so what? They get what they're supposed to get, that's it, you know, what they put in. You have to put money into the pension in order to collect some money out. And that's what you have to. That's what you have to do if you want to regulate this thing and make this thing organized. Because I did it. What back in the day it was called defined pension plan that I started for myself and my company. That uh, when they retire to be a certain age, they get to be able to draw down on some of that money. And a lot of them did. A lot of them draw down on them. You know, sometimes some some of the pensions that I paid off had over eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollars. I'm sure the football players got the same thing. Uh, hey, Chris is also Chris is also with me, but he's he's um hey, Elliot, he's gonna be in the room later. Elliot. Okay. Hey. Sorry about, all right, so uh, sorry about that. Um, Larry, uh, the other thing I'd like to get you about, um, you know, what are your thoughts on the uh, the heavyweight well boxing in general right now? You know, obviously, uh, you know, Jeff's nephew Floyd is is the biggest star. You got him and Manny Pacquiao, but you know, particularly in America, it seems like. The most important thing is, is the heavyweight scene, and, and since, you know, really since Mike Tyson, it, it's really been kind of dormant here in the stage, and, you know, how the Klitschko goes on top for so long, you know, and, and, and they're not really uh, really concerned, it seems like, with, you know, uh, putting the best face forward in America here. So so what are your thoughts on, on the heavyweight division and boxing in general and, and, and the future of it? Well, I think that I think boxing needs the heavyweight division because a lot of people turn the two on, the TV on when it comes down to the heavyweight. And the only thing now is keeping – Boxing, I think, standing is the one they, they talk about Mayweather and Pacquiao. That's all the people talk about. That's the one they want to see. <clears throat> now, I don't know how <laughs> Mayweather is saying that he wants $75 million back, and y'all say he wants $75 million. You know, if you give me $8 million, I take that, you know, the thing. <laughs> but uh, the money's out there, so they, they they need to get paid, and I think they should get paid. I don't think they should fight over that kind of money. I think they need to come to the agreement. And whatever left after that, you split it up again, like Jerry Cooney and I did. It was parity with Jerry Cooney, but the money was like $10 million apiece. And, but after the, everybody chipped in and got their share of the dollars, for well, Jerry and I did, we split it the rest. And if they just can come to that agreement, because a little bit of something is better than a lot of nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did that work with, uh, so did you and Cooney get along pretty well? I mean, I know there were some issues, like I mentioned earlier, you know, some some issues where you felt that there was a little, uh, you know, maybe well, you some know racial. What? You know what, stuff. there's always going to be some issues out there between two fighters, especially when you got managers and trainers, and especially when you, you're black and you're white. There's always somebody going to try to put something into it to, to make a fight worth more. And like Don King and Bob, uh, Don King and, um, Dennis Rappaport, they, they they strategized this fight to, uh, with a racial thing, and uh, you know when when you do that, it it takes it out of context. Jerry didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't want nothing to do with it, but we end up being in the middle of all of it because people want to see the black guy beat the white guy and the white guy beat the black guy, and who comes out uh, hurt the black guy and the white guy? That's that fighting me and Jerry. But Jerry and I are good friends. We're real good friends, you know, and we do a lot of work together even now. And uh, but people are, are crazy they, that way. When I when the bell before that bell rang, when he said shake hand, I said to Jerry, let's have a good fight because it's about you and I, nobody else. You and I are gonna take these shots today. You know, the best man will win. You know, but a lot of times you got people that betting money and wanting certain people to win. They try to make a big thing out of like nothing. <clears throat> the, last, the last thing I have for you, because I know Carla and, and Elliot have a couple questions before we let you get back to the debate there. But uh, you know, you really early in your career, you got to you got to spar with you know Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, Ernie Shavers, you know, and, and some really good fighters. Um, but the one thing I'd ask you at the at the convention also was that you know it seemed like you didn't get the credit you deserved because you, you weren't quite in that era. Even though you fought a lot of those guys, you know, you fought Ernie Shavers, you fought Muhammad Ali, you fought uh, yeah. Um, you know, Frazier, you, you fought. You know, you fought a lot of really great fighters there, but kind of at the tail end of their career. Um, do you think? I mean, 
do you feel that like you don't get credit for beating them even though you did because it was the end of their career, or, or, or how do you feel about that? Well, you know, we all we, we all was in the same bucket, you know. Those guys three, four years older than me and whatnot, yeah, at the time, you know. And sometimes the old guy always beat up the younger guy because the younger guy didn't have the experience. So it all depends what way you look at it, you know. Hey, listen, I was just happy to get the opportunity to say I fought one of the greatest fighters of all time or two of the greatest fighters of all time or three of the greatest fighters of all time. And I came out victoriously. I came out without getting hurt, and I made a few dollars, and we're still friends, and I'm, we're still able to live our life. Ernie Shavers is the guy I should not like because in the seventh round in Las Vegas, he hit me so damn hard, I thought lightning struck me. And then I, <laughs> I keep telling everybody that I still got the knot beside my head that he hit where he hit me at. So, uh, and he, he was champion, and he's the hardest puncher that I ever fought, and I said I should hate him for that. But he's a sweet guy, he's a lovely guy. I like Ernie a lot. We do a lot of things together, too. And uh, you never, he can never be an enemy of mine. Boxing could never be an enemy of mine because boxing didn't do anything but help me, and it helps a lot of black fighters uh, change their lives and white fighters. Mm -hmm. Hi, Carl, I know you you got some questions. So like Absolutely. You, you know, I'm chomping at the bit to ask uh, Mr. Holmes a question. Mr. Holmes, how are you doing? This is Carla J. Carla, I'm doing good. I can't complain. That's great. Well, I'm listening to all, you know all the conversation that's going on, and one of the things that really stands out for me is you know when you were explaining about the fight with Muhammad Ali, how you all just you know showed respect to one another, and the way that you actually handled that fight with Ali, you know obviously you have integrity about the sport and how you conduct yourself you know with the sport and during the sport. Um, also, another thing that stood out regarding Cooney and how you guys had regard for one another and you know divide and had concern with how money was divided. What are your thoughts on today's fighters, and do you feel that they share the same regard and respect for the sport of boxing? No, because everybody are mercenaries. You got the mercenaries; they want to kill each other. At least that's the way it looks. And then after the fight, they still want to kill each other. But they should be hugging each other, like I was doing with Jerry Cooney. That mm -hmm. was the biggest payday that I ever got, ten million dollars. And Muhammad Ali, listen, he let me be a sparring partner with him for four years. I was a sparring partner. He paid me. He showed me how to beat him, and then I got a big check after the fight. You know, mm -hmm. Ernie Shavers. I was also his sparring partner. He beat me up a little bit, but I got the end the chance to beat him up at the end. But while he was beating me up, I got a big check, and that would help me pay my bills. So, you know, I don't have nothing but love for boxing. I don't have nothing but love for, for them guys, Ernie Shavers, Jerry Cooney, Mike Tyson. That's why I said, Mike Tyson said, Larry, I love you. I said, well, if you love me, why you beat me up then? He started <laughs> laughing, you know. But, it's, but you know, it, I don't hold that. I don't hold somebody have to win, somebody have to lose. I don't hate Michael Smith because I thought I won the fight and they didn't give it to me because Michael's a good guy. You know, he did what he had to do. So what? They took the fight. And they want it, but I got paid for it, and that helped, that gave me a little more to put on my bank account. I didn't hate Jerry Cooney because he's white. Half of my family is white. My daughter just had a baby yesterday. Last night, my daughter had a baby. The baby ain't white. The baby's black. The baby, but the only thing I didn't like about it, he didn't have the boxing gloves on. But uh, <laughs> I, I got a Chase Marinelli. My my daughter has a baby. Uh, last night, his name is Chase Marinelli, all Italian. So, you know, hey, I'm happy. I don't see color. And this is why I stay in this town here, because we don't have a lot of that. A lot of the blacks, a lot of the whites go out with mixed colors, you know. Sometimes you see strange people like Chinese women going out with black guys and black guys going, and going out with Chinese women, you know. I mean, you know, it's strange, but that's the way it is here. Mm-hmm. Mr. Holmes, do you feel like if there was, you know, a little more respect for, for fighting in today's climate that, you know, we wouldn't hear about so many fighters, you know, complaining or, or, or you know, concerned that they just can't get a fight, you know, and you hear that so often, I can't get a fight, you know, they're trying to do different things for exposure, you know, et cetera, so that they can get a fight. Do you think that today's climate has a little bit to do with that? Oh, it's the same. It ain't changed. It's about money. It's about politics. And, you know, you just got to keep red on winning. And, and fighters don't want to fight somebody that can fight. 
They want to take. They want to fight people that can't fight and get paid, so they can build their records. But you got if to be a champion, you got to fight everybody and anybody. And you got to go everywhere and anywhere to fight, and you got to take whatever they give you. Like you know, I, you think I wanted to fight my first fight and only make sixty three dollars, and I had to tell people a lie that I made a lot more than that. But sixty three dollars, and and I fought six fights and I only made like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that you go to. You learn. You learn to, you you know, bite your tongue and not say you know what you want to say because if you do, they cut you off. You don't get no fight. And mm -hmm. that's what I did. I tried to bite my tongue and just do go out there and do my thing and 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 hope and pray that nobody hurts me and hope and pray that I don't hurt nobody else. Mm-hmm. Hey. Let me let me stir the pot here a little bit. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we have since we have Jeff Mayweather here with you, Larry, and, and you mentioned earlier about you know obviously Floyd and Manny. What are your thoughts on on their inability? You know, you mentioned you have to get the fight made and do it. What are your thoughts on you know whether if they get the fight made or not, and if they don't, what that ultimately would mean for both of them? I mean, they lose seventy five million dollars or whatever they offer them. <laughs> it means that I mean, you know, and that ain't nothing to sneeze at. You know, I mean. Uh -huh. it was, that's a lot of money. So, you know, those guys should just go ahead and fight, flip a coin. I wouldn't care if he took dope or dog food or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Take anything he wants because he's not going to help him in the ring. If you got the ability, if you're taking drugs, drugs will last you about four or five rounds, and they're going to wear off. But that's it. If you can sustain yourself, and you don't have to do no drug. I ain't never did no drug. I, you know, I took a little sugar uh, and, and a little honey. And I ate it sometime before the fight. They would say, that'll help me out with my strength. Well, it didn't help me out, not at all. So, you know, taking that stuff, like Lance Armstrong, they tell me he's doping himself. I can't see himself. I can't see him doping himself for 26 miles on a bike and marathon or whatever he's doing. It won't last that long. I mean, you know, unless you just take something while he's driving. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't see it, man. You know, these guys should just go ahead. Get it over with, make that money, put it in the bank, and hold on to it real tight because we're in a bad recession right now. Uh, Jeff, what do you think about that? Oh, I think that's true. Get the money, right, Jeff? Get the money. Yeah, get the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta get the money. I mean, yeah. Um, Elliot, I know you got a couple questions there. Can I jump in? Yeah, uh, Larry Holmes, this is Ali Vasquez. Um, how you doing, sir? Good, man. I'm all right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to actually celebrate your, your accomplishments because they never are mentioned. You know, you I consider you one of the most underrated heavyweight champions, although I do have you in my top ten. Mm. And um, I want to start off with uh, how many undefeated fighters that you fought. I mean, a lot of people don't realize you fought 11 times against undefeated um, champions or, or mm -hmm. going to become champions. Did you know that, Mr. Holmes? Yeah, of I knew that. Did. And not only that, when it was the WBA side, I fought like six or seven of their champions to beat them. But, you know, I never wanted to talk about that. I let the people talk about that. And you know what? Nobody even looked at that. But, and I'm surprised that you've seen that. But, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be able to say that I got out of the ring. Uh, with my faculties, and I got a few bucks left in my pocket, and I'm happy, you know. I'm home watching the debate, and I hope Mitt Romney loses the damn election. <laughs> 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 and and um, another thing that, that you actually accomplished was uh, bringing the IBF to light. Uh, before you, the IBF was pretty much, um, you know, uh, we would like to say like a, a stepbrother to the other titles, and you actually made that title relevant. Can you, um, you know, can you comment on that? Well, you know, I was looking for a different organization. Well, I was wrong when I did that, and I can say that because I thought the IBF was another way that I can, you know, increase my money because at that time they wanted me to fight Greg Page for a million and a half dollars, and they wanted me to fight Marvis Frazier for three and a half million dollars. So they wanted to say, you fight Greg Page, if you don't, we're going to take your title. And I had to just look at it, you know. It wasn't a, uh, a hard decision for me to make. Give me the three and a half million and take the title, you know. But they didn't take the title, but I just give it to them. And I said, I'm IBF WDC champion. 
and I got the three and a half minutes. I got the chance to fight Marvin Frazier, and it took like two minutes to get it over with. And that was the best payday, one of the best paydays I had. Right. But I be had um, another way out for a lot of fighters. Yes, it is. And, and I have a, another, um, is there any truth to the rumor that later in your career, when you made your comeback, that you actually had some fights um, wearing contact lenses? Oh, yeah, I did. When I fought Holyfield, and then, I had a detached retina. When I fought Ben Holyfield, I had a detached retina. I, I got the detached retina training in Miami and right before the fight with Ray Mercer. I did not get the, I did not get my eye operated or nothing. I went out there and fought Ray Mercer with one eye. And I beat Ray Mercer. I conned him into the tricks that I was doing and beat him and won the decision. And then the fight with, with Holyfield that I had signed with Holyfield, I didn't want to blow the $10 million purse. So I went into the hospital and got my eye operated on and asked Bob Aaron to see if he could give me more time. He said, yeah, I can give you more time. But when I got my operation, next thing you know, <laughs> he didn't give me more time. It was like four weeks later. And I went, my eye was not ready, really, to heal to fight in the Holyfield. But it was kind of hard to turn down $10 million. So I put a contact lens in my eye. And I went out there, and I was fighting with Holyfield. I had gotten decent shape, not good shape, but decent shape. And uh, he hit me with a left hook in the third or fourth round, and that contact lens flew out of my eye, and I was not able to to see again because it wasn't. It, it, I guess I got hit harder, didn't fit good, and I couldn't see it. And I fought Holyfield for twelve rounds with one eye that that I couldn't really see. Unbelievable. <laughs> I uh, know, uh, Carla's got one more for you, I know. Carla, back to you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, let a lady I, in there, let a lady in there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clear the way. <laughs> now, well, I, I do have one more question for you. Um, you fought, you know, obviously a lot of notables, like we, you know, just said from Marciano, Norton, Ali, Cooney, Frazier, you know, of all the notables that you've had an opportunity to fight, which would you say was the highlight or was a highlight of your career? Ken Norton. June 9, 1978 at Caesars Palace. <clears throat> that was the highlight of my career. That's when I won the heavyweight championship. And I tell you what, that fight, you know, again, you know, I had pulled the left muscle, my left arm, for six days before the fight, and they wanted to call it off. And I said, no, this is my last opportunity to be champion. So if mm -hmm. I don't fight this fight, so we iced it down with a guy named Keith Clevin that lived in Las Vegas. He got a sports medicine shop there. And he iced me down, rub my arm, rub my arm, make sure that, you know, it wouldn't tighten up and stuff like that. But it never healed good. But I got in the ring anyway, and then I said, God, help me. Don't let me go now. And I went out there and I fought with that arm, and I became, you know, the heavyweight champion of the world. That's the most memorable, uh, memorable fight I ever had. Amazing. Jim, you've been awful quiet here. I know you got some questions for Larry. I know you got to ask him something. <laughs> I uh, know. It's just a matter of, I mean, I just have ultimate respect for Larry and, you know, and I mean, I was, you know, a huge fan of his when he was, when he was an active fighter. And, you know, just much love and much respect. And I appreciate it, man. You know, and that's the way I am, man. I give love to all the guys, man, because we are in a game, man. It's a hard game, and we can get hurt in this game. And I never wish anybody bad luck because when you do that, it comes back on yourself. I, mean, uh, I just wish that uh, uh, right now that we could be a little bit more act they could be a little bit more action on TV instead of everything got to be on paid TV and you can't really see it you know so uh, I wish we had get those promoters to start giving back giving us uh, some good yeah. action on regular TV. Well, you know, I want to add one thing there because you, you say that one of my earliest memories uh, was actually you know and I'll, I'm, I'm a master of putting my foot in my mouth so I'm going to do it here again. Um, <laughs> But my earliest memory was of fights was you and, and Carl Williams fighting, and oh. I was rooting I was rooting so hard for Carl Williams to win that fight. And I don't even know why, um, you know. But I, that's why it goes back to that kind of the way I think you're portrayed. And, and you know, I think it was the underdog thing. You know, maybe the, you know, guys of Americans we always root for the mm -hmm. underdog, and he was supposed to be no competition for you. So when he started off so well, 
you know, I remember rooting, rooting, rooting. And then, you know, it kind of did a 180 when you came back and fought Tyson. You were the ultimate underdog. You know, it kind of came where I was rooting for you to win. So, you know, it's just kind of weird the way, uh, you know, I, I guess the, the New York Yankees no. syndrome, you know, where everybody roots for the underdog. That's, but it was great, you know, fights on pay-per-view. Yeah. That, that's normal. You know what, man? I'm a I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan, man. I was rooting for Buddy Ryan and Michael Vick, man. But I'm tired of seeing them guys lose. I'm not rooting for them no more. I always root for the other team. Maybe they'll win one, you know? So, uh, yeah, I listen, man. It's, Somebody got to root for somebody, you know. And, you know, whether you know him or not or like him or not, you know. You got to. I used to root for Hulk Hogan to get beat, but he's one of my best <laughs> friends. Never gonna happen. Well, that ain't gonna happen. So, hey, did Larry, just before we let you go here, just uh, tell us what you're up to now. I know, I know, I, I listened to your your group there, Marmalade, a little earlier. Mm-hmm. I know you love to sing. You were singing for everybody yeah. at the. The gathering here. So tell us about what you're what you're up to now. Well, we do have a band. We had a band for over 30 years, and I do that every now and then. You know, I'm booked at, at some of the, the casinos around here, and you know we don't make a lot of money doing it, but you know I have a lot of fun, and I you know I have my own TV show. It's, it's called What the Heck They Thinking. It's not it's not syndicated yet, but I'm still trying to syndicate. I've been doing it for the last six or seven years, and then you know I got my businesses done. I got my nightclub, my restaurant, and stuff like that. And I just have fun and have parties and enjoy my life. But, you know, I'm tired of that, too. You know, I used to have 35 cars. I only got three. I'm downsizing oh. my mold now. I'm not going to do the rest, the things that I used to do. And I just want to try to be happy, man, enjoy life, come out there in Las Vegas sometimes. And and not not too often because I don't want to lose, <laughs> lose my mind because sometimes, you know, I get out there and the party starts. I don't want to stop. So. Um, exactly. I just want to enjoy my life. That's what I'm doing. And I just got a new grandbaby yesterday. Yeah, congratulations on that. And, and you got the the Italian and the black junior. There'll be definitely be a fighter in the future there, huh? You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> you got that. What about the, uh, you do the social media, there's some Twitters out there. Are, are any of those really you, just to make sure yeah. so we don't promote the wrong one? That's my Twitter on there. My daughter runs it, you know, Candy. That's the... the Larry Holmes, 75, is that you? Yeah, that's me. Oh, that is. Can't you tell how good looking I am out there? That's got to be me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's always some fake ones, so we don't want to send the people the wrong way. And then, uh, I don't know, do you do Facebook or anything like that? No, I don't do that. I just do do the Twitter. That's it, man. I think Facebook and those things, people people put too much stuff out there on you. You know, I don't want to, I don't like that. But they use, every time I take a picture with somebody, there it is. (laughs) Facebook. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm guilty of that. I, I took a picture of you uh, definitely several at the convention and as well as a few weeks ago when we did. Oh, you're yeah. still doing the TV thing, too, the Wealth TV, right? Still yeah. doing that on occasion? Yeah, matter of fact, I'll be in California in the month where they got a fight up there. I can't remember the guy, but I'm doing a fight up there with Wealth TV, yeah. Yep, I'll be in California. <laughs> All right. All right, well, I appreciate it. Uh, who else? Anyone, anything else before we go? Anybody? No, I just yeah, wanted to uh, say, Mr. Holmes, it was, you know, you are amazingly humble, and, and more people in general should take a page out of your book. It's, it was definitely a pleasure speaking with you. And I thank you guys. I thank you. And you know what? You get more with sugar you do with vinegar. And I don't care yeah. how much money you got, how much money you ain't got, you're still human. And I mm-hmm. and I make mistakes. And I when I do, I know I did. I apologize. So, um, hey, thanks, guys, for having me on your show. This is my home right. number. Don't give it to the public. <laughs> no, you do do give me a call. Uh-huh. All right. Hey, um, Elliot, anything for you? I know you want to wrap up real quick. Anything? Yeah, yeah. Um, Larry, you know, you, you've been a very successful uh, person, like, year, years after your retirement. What's your recipe for success and advice that you can give for fighters for, like, um, when they step out of the game and they can no longer be active fighting? Keep working at it. Don't give up. Work hard. Fire work ain't easy, but it's fair, and that's what you got to do is stay on top because if you go to sleep, everything will leave you, so you got to stay with it. Right. Stay with the hard work. All right, yeah, thanks again. Yeah, I was like, thanks again. Uh, it was an honor having you on here, and and like I said, I think you know over time you're you're getting more and more credit that you deserve for for a, you know an incredible career. And I'll let Jeff, I'll let you finish it up and and send him off. Go ahead, Jeff. Send me off, buddy. 
No, well, I, I mean, I already pretty much said what I wanted to say, and that's basically, you know, I have the ultimate respect for you, and, you know, and, and it's a pleasure to have you on the show, and hopefully we can get you back. Hey, Jeff, that's great, man. Listen, any time, man. Hey, listen, all the You're Mayweathers and everybody that I grew up with coming in this game of boxing, hey, it's always been it's always been like a family, man. I want to stay that way. So anytime you guys need me, you got me, Okay. Uh, thanks All so much, Larry. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Bye. Thank Take you, Mr. Holmes. All right. That was uh, obviously Larry Holmes. That was a true honor for us to have him on the show. Great guy. And then, you know, like we had said, you know, it, it just, uh, to me, it seems like he's getting more uh, more respect as time goes on. Um, Jeff, how do you see it? I mean, as far as the boxing circles, do you think he's finally, people are finally starting to come around him a little bit, or are you still highly underrated? No, I mean, I think that he's going to get more respect. Probably because of the fact that now he's, it's one of those things that he was young at the time. And when you're young, you want everything, you know, you fight, he's fighting hard to try to prove himself. And he was fighting so hard to get the respect that he felt that he deserved. But a lot of times, and when it comes to boxing, sometimes you don't get no respect until you're 10 years removed from your career. And I think that's the case with him, you know, and that's the case, that, that was... Actually, that was the case even with Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was loved only by his people at when he was fighting. And Muhammad Ali finally became loved by everyone because he was hated by so many, you know, so many people as well. But, I mean, once, you know, he took a stand, you know, and things like that, I mean, it became, it became bigger than boxing. And so then he was accepted. He was accepted by everybody that was against the war. And, you know, and people that believed in, you know, different things that he believed in. So, I mean, he became, he became loved long after his boxing career was over. Well, that's the one thing I, I, I think that, you know, for so long, I, I think so many people think that he's this mean and horrible guy. And then, you know, the more he talks to people and is around people, they realize, wow, that's not the guy he was. And I think, you know, ultimately he will change his opinion. Because like I said, you know, when, when I met him, I, I, you know, multiple people came, you know, was he really mean and, and, and nasty and that kind of thing. And, he, and he's completely opposite. So, you know, I think as time goes by, people realize, you know, that he's, he's not the image that, that people had of him. But uh, we're going to be joined here by Derek Gaynor in a few minutes. I'll still wait for him to call on, but we are going to say goodbye. She's got to go do some work. Uh, had a real job there, so Carla Jay is going to be, be leaving us. Uh, Carla, thanks so much for stopping by, and, and, uh, and go ahead and tell the folks so they can follow you and that kind of stuff. Not a problem at all. It was a pleasure. Great show tonight. And um, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Real Carla J on Twitter, and also the same on Instagram and on Facebook. It's simply Carla J. And I will talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot. All Thank right. Thanks for joining us, Carl. All right. You guys take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, Jeff, are you sure you gave uh, Derek the right number? Yeah, I said it to him yesterday. I just texted <laughs> okay, the, the caller, too. Do what? I said I just texted him again to call. Okay. Well, why for oh. him, uh... Go ahead, Elliot. Did you say something? No, I mean, Larry Holmes, I mean, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, he's, you know, one of the greatest to ever do it. You know, um, just just look at his accomplishments, you know, 17 title defenses, 48-0 and 0 before he suffered his first defeat. I mean, there's, there's no denying Larry Holmes. You know, the only thing that I can see why he, at, at the time, he had a chip on his shoulder was maybe because he was, he came in a, in a, in an era where it was a little bit after the Muhammad Ali era and right before the Mike Tyson era. So, you know, it was a weak division like it is now. I kind of compare that era to now. But, I mean, the numbers don't lie. I mean, the guy's one of the all-time greats. I actually have him in my personal uh, heavyweight list. I have him at number three right behind Lewis Lewis and Muhammad Ali. I mean, he's that good to me. Probably had the best jab in boxing, if not at least for the heavyweight scope. I mean, this just is no denying Larry Holmes. And that's uh, that's what I gotta say about the uh, Larry Holmes uh, aura. All right. Well, we uh, thanks for your opinion there. We're gonna bring on our next guest of the evening. Uh, first, we had Larry Holmes. Now we're gonna bring on one a guy that Jeff works with. He knows well. So, Jeff, I'm actually gonna let you do the dirty work. Why don't you introduce our next fighter? The slowest man in boxing. Derek Hope. 
Hey, my man. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Man. How you doing, man? Good, good. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, Derek, appreciate you taking the time. I, I know you don't get out there a lot, so it is, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. All right, so the last couple of weeks we kept talking to Jeff. Um, you know, he, he's back and forth to Florida, and he's not going to Florida. So so explain to us your last fight and, and the whole drama there and, and how that ended up turning out. Well, I had a fight. Yeah, I did have a fight a couple of weeks ago. Um, the fight was originally scheduled for August 25th. Um, and I had a, um, a problem with my opponent. Um, he had an injury. Um, so it was postponed and pushed back to the 29th. Um, what I'm learning, man, about doing the promotional side of boxing is that stuff happens all the time behind the scenes that people actually don't never see and never hear about. So I'm just getting a taste of that part of boxing. How, how do you like the promotion? It seems like every fighter is getting into that. So that is it a big pain in the ass, or do you enjoy it? Or it, it, I, I like it, but it's a lot of work. You you have to um, build up a team, man, and, and that's what I'm working on, building up a team to take a lot of pressure off me because it's kind of difficult, you know, worrying about uh, who's doing what, and then you still got to train and prepare for a fight. So it's, it's a lot to it, man. It's, it's not an easy task, you know, but um, I, I think at the end it's, it's worth it. You know, the reward is there, you know, and, and – you know, I was able to go in and get the job done, so, you know, everything worked out for me. So you ended up ultimately, it's, it's kind of strange, but I know you had so many problems with the opponents thing, but ultimately you fought a guy who was making his debut, huh? How, how was that? No, I, they actually, it, it, his record was actually a little bit different than that. It was 18-3. and three. Um, It wasn't his debut. You know, most of his fights were, were he's from the Dominican Republic, so most of his fights were over there. And I don't know how, he was 18-3, and three from, so I don't know how that came out. I actually saw that on box rack. Um, oh, that's so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, but you know, it, it's okay. What were you going to say, Jeff? I said, no, it's okay. I mean, the, the guy, you know, it, it was what it was. I got, I got, I got a good five rounds out of the fight. You know, I was able to get the guy out of there and, um, you know, I got, I landed back on my feet, you know, and now I'm, I'm looking forward to fighting, um, in December. All right. So, so now you... You came back. You, you've only had a handful of fights in the last few years. Uh, Jeff, right. I actually want to ask you, you know, you, you just started working with them. Um, you know, considering his inactivity and, uh, you, you know, fighting later in his career, what do you think, uh, you know, are his strengths at this point and what he still has to offer? Um, I think the one thing that I found out when I first started working with, with Derek was the fact that, I mean, he still has his speed. I mean, tremendous speed. And, you know, actually now he's a little bigger and, he, and he's sitting down on his punches more, so now he's even a better puncher. And I think that, you know, a lot of times when at, in boxing, you know, sometime later you, you mature. And I think that, you know, and that's the case with him now. I think that he's, he's a mature fighter, you know, a smart guy, and, you know, and now he's going to make the most of, you know, of this, this last opportunity. All right. What do you still hope to accomplish, Derek? I mean, like I said, you've only had a handful of fights in the last few years. I mean, do you still have aspirations for pursuing a title and, and think you have that kind of ability? Oh, yeah, most definitely, man. You, you know, the, the hunger um, had went away a couple of years ago, and I just, you know, pretty much wasn't – my desire and my drive wasn't there, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I'm most definitely motivated. <laughs> you know, I dropped from 190 pounds all the way down to 140. You know, to wow. to make sure that yeah, to make sure that I am really prepared to fight. You know, my 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 focus, my my mind, my spirit, everything is one hundred percent on boxing. Um, I realize that the clock is the, the clock is ticking for me, and I don't have time, you know, to waste. You know, so that's why you know I get to fight on twenty ninth, and and I'm fighting December sixth here in Pensacola. So I'm not wasting time. You know, um, I'm I'm staying active, and and I feel great, man. You know. It's been a, a honor and a pleasure to work with Jeff, and, and uh, I'm learning a lot. He's not as fast as me, um, but, you know, he got good hands, you know, and, and, and it's really a pleasure, man. I'm, I'm serious. It's really a pleasure, man, to, to, to work with him. So so you said he's not as fast as you. So, so how no. did the gym session go with him? Man, the gym, I, I asked him for a combination. I asked him to give me five hooks. I'm throwing six hooks, you know, he can barely keep up with four, you know what I'm saying? So my hands is just so much faster than Jeff's. You know, he you know, he tries all his little tricks, try to hit me with the mitts, but it just don't work. 
you know, I don't know if he thought I was going to slow down because I got a little older, but the hand speed and everything is still there. It's not going to happen. So just, you know, just when you talk to him, let Jeff know that he needs to speed his hands up a little bit. Oh, I forgot he was on the air. My bad. I forgot. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, yo, Jeff, you already know it gets, he gets the doom like everyone else. No one gets away from the doom. Yeah, but nah, man, it's, it's, it's really, it's really good. I think he might be right, Joe. I think it's slowing down because I, I've seen some other guys, you know, kind of starting to get the better. You know, the doom test is not quite as effective as it might have once been. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I just know he can't keep up with keep up with these hands over here. I don't know about anybody else, but I know these hands that that go over here in Florida. These hands are amazing, you know. Um, so I just, <laughs> you know, my 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 thing is just. Just being mentally prepared, and 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 I know my my speed and my power, all that stuff is there. You know, um, you know. Sometimes you you get away from from doing what you love, and then you 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 get a, some people don't get the opportunity to go back and, and make it right or do it and come back and do it better. But I thank God that I have the opportunity to come back and do it. I've never been in no real wars. I've never really been banged on and beat on. So I'm still I'm still there. My body's fresh. I feel great, and and it's just. You know, I know you used to probably cliche the old fighters when they come back, they say the same thing, but I truly feel, really feel great. And um, I never really, I don't drink, I don't do anything crazy, so I feel good. It's, it's, this is my time, you know, and, and I'll make the best of it. Right. So you had mentioned before that, you know, you had kind of lost the, the motivation, that kind of thing to fight. Um, you mm -hmm. know, you you fought four times since 2005, following your loss to Chris John. Um, what specifically, why did you lose the, the drive? And when you decided to come back, you know, this was your first fight in two years, um, when you first started getting in there, were you surprised that you still had the skills? Or, or, or how did that go when you first started, you know, seriously boxing training? What did you think of what you still had left? Well, well, sometimes, man, your environment can, can contaminate you and you don't like what, you, what, you, what you're around and what you, what's going on. So I didn't like my environment, and, and so I, I had to remove myself from my environment and I did that. You know, um, the true story is what really gave me the, the the drive and the motivation to actually fight is when I watched the Ortiz and Mayweather fight. Um, to be very honest with you, I watched that fight, and I knew at that moment that I was coming back. I knew at that moment that um, I was going to be world champ again. I knew at that moment that I was going to dedicate my life back to the sport that I love and that I miss. I knew that I was going to come from, get from 190 back down to 135. You know, I'm at 40 now, I'm going to 35. I knew that I was going to be able to do that. So I, I reached out to Jeff, and he was like, yeah, man, most definitely. So I, I knew at that moment, man, that I was going to be uh, coming back and being motivated to do it. So, you know, it was, it was, it was me sitting around watching – um, running my restaurant, eating wings, getting fat, and watching <laughs> Mayweather. I'm serious, watching the Mayweather Ortiz fight. I knew at that moment that I was coming back out of retirement and, and fighting and going hard at everybody that's at 135. So, uh, is that, you know, watching Ortiz and, and Mayweather fight, is that what made you want to get with, with Jeff? Or, or how did the whole, the whole you know, working, starting work with him thing come about? No, I, that that just motivated me to fight. I I I knew I, me and Jeff we've been friends and communicated for years, way way back in the day, before I became champion, before any of that. Um, but I watched Jeff, and I know I know how Jeff is by by our communication and friendship. He's always been laid back, and I watched him with the mitts. I watched him, and I know he know the game. So I'm a boxer. His technique is boxing. So I knew that it would be a fit for me. I, at, at the beginning, I was kind of a little, you know, I wasn't, I didn't know. But once I got to Vegas and after my first day working with him, I started looking for an apartment, you know, because I knew I'm, that's where I wanted to be. You know, I knew that that's where I wanted to, you know, get my career and get everything back going. Last question here for me before I turn over to Elliot is he had a couple questions for you. But, uh, yeah. How many times, you know, so you've known Jeff for a long time, but the texting thing has only been a few years. So how many times during an average session you work with Jeff, you think he texts? He texts? On the phone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. You know what? He, he, now I think about that. You're right. He is on the phone a lot. <laughs> You're right, man. I never, I that never even thought about that. That was the best day of his life when it was... Oh, my God. That was the hey, best man, day of his life wait, when wait, it was texting wait. unlimited. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hold on, hold on for a second. Let me, let me tell you something. I just now that you say that he came down here for my fight in August. We were driving, and then it dawned on me. I said, "Wait a minute! He got a text every second. I said, "Yo, man! I, I think I even said to him, "You better be glad you got unlimited, because I've never in my life seen someone get so many text messages, man." You're, we were, we're right. all in our homes earlier, and his phone keeps making this frog or duck sound because he gets text nonstop. Every, <laughs> they every can't even second. On, on the Ultimate Fighter, he's a coach under Roy Nelson, and they can't even film or they can't even show him on camera because all he did was text the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's true. You're right. You're absolutely See, right. And you know it's true because he's not even defending himself. He knows it's true. <laughs> oh no, I have never in my life, I've never in my life seen anyone get that many text messages. At one time, and I think I he, we had a conversation about it. I just it's, it's unbelievable, man. When I first started with him, that's the only thing I ever did. The, the always the the final question was how many times does text uh, does Jeff text during a during a, a session with you? Because that, yeah, that's it was, his it was thing. Not, yeah, now I must say it was, it was a lot, but not as much as when we were driving around town. He might have got he probably got a million texts within twenty twenty two hours. Jeff, do you want to defend yeah. yourself, or are you just going to take he it? He can't. He can't. He's an honest man. He can't. Ooh, it's true, because <laughs> I mean, my, phone would, my phone would die when we would go places, because I got so many texts. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like I said, that had, to have been, that had to have been the best day in your life, Jeff, was when they had uh, the unlimited texting plans, you know? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. When they when they charged, you know, back in the day, we had the two ways, and then some of them on some plans, they, they charged you per, per two-way text yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah. Jeff, you have been towed up. That's all I can say. He's like, the, he's like the big guy going to the buffet. You know, it's the same thing with Jeff when he <laughs> ordered the texting plan. They're like, oh, no, not you. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Elliot, uh, sorry about that, Elliot. I know you had a couple questions for Derek. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Derek, how you doing? This is Elliot. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Good. Good, thank you. Yeah, I want to take you back to memory lane a little bit. Um you being from Pensacola, you're great friends with uh, Roy Jones Jr. How, how did you guys uh, meet up as um, when you guys were young? Um, I'm, I actually met him in '84. Um, he was um, he had just won the Olympic Nationals, and um, I, I met him met him then, and um, you know came up came up as came up as friends, and then as I started fighting, he became a manager, my promoter. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of fights that he was made of in, you was on the undercards, and I noticed that he was always out there watching you fight and making sure that he saw your fight and then went back to the dressing room. Um, what did that mean to you as a friend and, and, and first and, you know, and, uh, promoter second? It, 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 it felt great. I, I think he, he, he used that um, to help him stay relaxed and to see exactly our styles so similar to each other. He did that to to help him see what was going on with me and how I was what moves I made also in the ring. But it, it was a great feeling, man. You know, uh, once I started fighting closer to, you know, his fight, you know, of course he couldn't do it as much. But at the beginning of the, at the beginning of everything, you know, he was able to do that. And it was a great feeling, a great honor, man, to do that. And and I had a great time, you know, actually fighting and and being in the gym working out with him. You know, I owe him a lot for for giving me the opportunity. To, to to do what I do. Yeah, and then how did it feel to finally, you know, have that belt around your waist back in 2000 when you defeated Freddie Norwood? I mean, not only did you become a world champion, but you also took away Norwood's O. How'd that feel? It felt great, man. You know, um, it was a unbelievable night for me. I, I kind of hate the way the fight turned, but um, it was a, it was a great feeling. You know, I enjoyed it. Um, that's that's what that's what you live for as a fighter. You know, um, I had a lot of uh, uh, some other fights that I missed the opportunity to do that um, to become world champion. But that particular night was a, a magic night for me. Magical night for me. I was able to beat Noah, who was an undefeated fighter. Um, who was he was very tough. I, I'm to be honest with you. He didn't have to fight dirty. He was automatically tough and strong. Um, but 
it was a great night for me, man. I, I miss it. That's what. That's why I'm doing what I I do. That's why I'm training. That's why you know I'm taking trips to Vegas to to work with Jeff, so I can get back to that point. Because I, I miss it. To be very honest with you. And and how cool was it to be featured in a video game, in Knockout Kings? I played with I played your character a few times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they contacted me and um and 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 asked me um to do it. And of course, you know that's something that you know you 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 can't turn that down. You know, have an opportunity to be on a video game, and it's it's, it's unreal. Um, uh, I can't play the game. I, I I actually matched myself up against Kevin Kelly. And um, what happened to me in the first fight is what happened to me on the game. So I kind of tore the game up, <laughs> you know. But um, you know, I, I enjoy the game. I, I actually um, uh, went out and bought both both games to to frame them, have them put up, you know, for my kids, so they'll have it later on down the line. But it was a great honor, man. So yeah, yeah. I just, I'll get back to Elliot in a second. But does that which one kind of tells you you made it more, being featured in a video game or, or the world title? <laughs> The world title, man. You can't. <laughs> the world title, man. I mean, it's it's nothing. It's nothing like that. I mean, nothing like that. Well, uh -huh. you know, just just the fact that you know you go places and people refer to you as as world champion. You know, it's unbelievable. Uh -huh. You know, it's a great feeling. And and I, I'm I'm being honest, man. I I miss that. You know, and and I'm working my butt off to to get back to that point. And it, it's not going to be uh -huh. easy. Um, but I'm, I'm most definitely here to do it. Right. Um, going back for just a moment, I want to ask you, you know, obviously, you know, we, we talked about Roy Jones there for a moment. But what are your mm -hmm. thoughts as, as far as him now and, you know, in his career? You know, he's, he's still determined to go forward. Um, what are your thoughts of, of what he's doing now? And, and you know, I mean, obviously you support him, but do, do you agree with what he's doing? Do you wish he'd hang it up? Or, or do you think he's still got it in him somewhere? Well, I, I, I would just... I just pray that he's 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 healthy and that you know he's okay. Um, but if if you know it's it's kind of difficult to tell someone to not not go to work. You know that's that's the way he's going to make his money. Um, but I, I realize that we are in a competitive sport and that um, the fans basically pay us. Um, I I would if he would continue to fight. I would just hope that he would get in in great shape and 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 be the be. Be, be in shape and be prepared to fight um, for 12 rounds, um, or 20 rounds, I should say. Um, if he if he does that, then I think he'd be fine. But if he's not mentally um, um, prepared and physically prepared, then I don't think he should fight. But if he's getting himself in shape and he's just losing, you know, um, I think that's you – know, I look at it a little bit different. But once you started to get, you know – KO like he has been in the last few years. I think he should really look at look at what's going on. Honestly, and, and I said this is Jeff, and, and I know Jeff can hear this. I said to him, I said, man, um, we cool enough that if I'm not cutting it, tell me I need to sit my my butt down. I didn't say butt, but tell me I need to sit down. Um, I know he remember the conversation because you know at the end of the day, I have a little baby here. I got two little kids here, two more little kids here. At the end of the day, I want when I come home, I want them to be able to look at me and I'll be able to talk to them and everything be okay. I want to be able to have the same right. conversation with you and them, you know, 10 years from now, and I sound okay and I'm okay. Boxing is a brutal sport, and right. and boxing is 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 what I do. It's it's not it's not who I am. I I will not stay in this game and embarrass myself ever again or not be in shape going to a fight you know, not prepared, it's not going to happen with me. I can only speak for myself. I'm not suggesting that Roy is doing that, but what I am saying is that at the end of the day, I want to be clear on where I'm going. I'm putting my shoes on right. I want to make sure that I'm okay. So if I'm getting flattened and knocked out and beat and banged on, I told Jeff and I told my other people here, tell me to sit down somewhere. Don't even train me, well, you, know, I, you know, stay away. Well, I know, I know Jeff, and I know, I know he will do that. You know, I won't mention anything, but I know he's told fighters that in the past, and and I told him I wanted to fight once, and he, and he told me real quickly to sit down. So I know he's not afraid yeah. to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But but the one thing about Jeff, you know, Jeff, you you, you do have experience in, uh, I guess now a former world champion, but you know, ha having guys that are are you know on the back end of thirty or or forty years old with Celestino Cabrera, obviously, so. 
So, you know, working forward with Derek, Derek here, uh, you know, what are the differences and what are the things with him that, that you want to work on as, as opposed to, you know, maybe an up-and-coming fighter? Are you asking me? Yes, you. You oh, don't okay. want to end up like Jeff, Derek. That's the thing. <laughs> don't end up like Jeff. <laughs> no. I mean, the, the, the one thing is, is, is that basically, you know, if, just like Derek said, you know, I mean, he did. We sit down and we talk. And um, and that's one thing that he said. He said, um, you know, um, just keep it real with me. You know, don't let me go out there and, and make a fool of myself. You know, and um, and of course, I'm one of those I'm one of those trainers that I've I've already told fighters before that it's time it's time for you to hang them up. And they were you know and they were guys that you know who actually were a lot younger than Derek. And plus, you know, they were guys that you know basically. They had a name, but really couldn't cut it no more. And basically, I don't have a problem with, with telling the fighter that, you know, it's, it's over with. You know, it's over with. I mean, I can't tell you to quit, but I can tell you that I'm no longer going to be a part of it. You know, and and most fighters that, you know, I, I have a tendency to work with, I become, you know, I become friends with them because actually I want to know you know, what makes that fighter tick. I want to know what's going on inside that fighter's head. You know, and then sometimes what's going on at home. Because a lot of times you gotta you got to actually become a friend to a fighter to actually get an old fighter. You know, and, and like Derek said, I mean, he has, a, he has a family to take care of, you know. And um, and so and, and boxing, you know, boxing, is, boxing can be a brutal sport, you know. But, I mean, he's already been, he's been to the mountaintop, so he knows what it takes to get there again. And hopefully that's what, you know that's what our goal is. Our goal is to you know at least win win a world title and um, you know then hopefully go out on top. So let me ask you this, Derek. Then you know you've been out of the spotlight for a while. Um, how far away do you think you are? You know, if you have the the best success in each fight, how far do you think you're away from getting a shot like that? And and give us your you know your plan as far as how long you think you you want to keep fighting and and you know each step along the way, what do you think you're going to do? Well, what I what I've done, these are mistakes. I'm gonna fight for one of the vacant um, WBC um, Intercontinental titles. Then I'm gonna fight again um, January 31st, and and I'm gonna defend that title. Um, I know I'm gonna win. I'm gonna defend that title. And then I I think um, in 2013 it's gonna be a very key year for me um, as far as I'm gonna eventually either fight um, for a, a, a a spot at, to fight the right to fight for the title or fight for the title. I don't think my my step in my process is going to be a little bit faster than a regular a guy who's just coming up. I'm a former champion, so it won't take me as long. It won't take me as long. I just need to get some fights in. Um, pretty much, I've talked to every organization um, recently, and basically they just wanted me to get a win, get a fight in because I sat out for two years, and I did that already. So this next fight, like I said, is for one of the vacant WBC and the Continental titles, and that will put me in the rankings right there, and then I'm going to defend it. That's going to move me up a little bit faster. And they have a guy who's who has a WBC title. I want to say it's a silver title, WBC silver title. Um, I'm going to try to petition them for me to fight him. Um, I don't know him. And I really don't don't care. I just know I feel great, and I want to fight anybody out there. I, I don't have time to waste. So whatever step I have to take, if I have to fight every day, once a month, I'm gonna fight once a month. I'm gonna make some noise, and <laughs> I'm gonna be prepared. I'm gonna stay in shape. See, I can't. I realize at this stage here, every move is has to be very precise. I have to do stay in shape, stay ready. I can't let my body just go out of you know go out of shape. I can't do that anymore. I have to, every time you see me now, I'm going to be in shape. I can't, I can't, I can't take no chances. You know what I'm saying? So I know what I'm facing. My maturity level is so much better. I understand the game. I know what I need to do. I just need to do it. You know, and the thing that I wanted to do more than anything, and I did it the other night, was just let my hands go. You know, be aggressive and, and throw more punches. And in doing so, I think everything will open up for me. All right. So give us your, uh, you know, the ultimate finish of your career. How, how does it end for you? Uh, your 
my my thing is to go out as world champion. I you know I'm I'm going to fight at 35. I'm gonna win the title at 35. I'm win want to win the title at 40, and then you know um, go out on top. You know retire, go in the sunset as go out as world champion. You know that's that's my plan. That's what I want to do. So so you don't you want know, to just win and retire. You want to win it and, and win another one as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm I'm not just I'm not coming back for one title. You kidding me? Who does that? I just told you I came from 190 pounds, man. In April when I came to Vegas, I was 190 pounds. You understand what I'm saying? This April I was 190 pounds, man. So for me to drop all that weight, you think I'm dropping all this weight to fight for the title at one time? Come on, man. I, I'm not. I'm not in it for that, man. This, this is this is so for real. I, I trust me. I don't like to fly. I'm not flying way out of the train with Jeff, man, just to win the title one time. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, Jeff, man. I, I, I got to do it. Right now, Jeff. Unfortunately, you didn't get the corner in the last fight because you went the first time and there was a hurricane or whatever, and then the second yeah. time there was problems with the opponent. So, so Jeff, tell us about that. I mean. How unfortunate uh, was it that you weren't able to able to be in the corner? And do you think that at all hinders you you going forward with them in this next fight? No, I mean because I mean I understand the situation. I mean, there's no lack of communication between me and Derek, and you know I was already informed on what happened, so it wasn't a big deal. And and plus I know that you know I mean the opposition that was put in front of him, you know. The last time, I mean, he didn't necessarily need me, you know, to be there. But, of course, I mean, when we start stepping up in class, I mean, of course, he's going to need, you know, to work with me and, you know, and, and basically, you know, and that's and that's the case. You know, it's just not, you know, like, and it was unfortunate. It's just an unfortunate situation that, that happened, you know. I mean, so, I mean, like I said, I mean, he was able to keep the ball rolling and, you know, and, Keep his career alive, and and we're gonna keep on, and we're gonna keep on doing what we gotta do until we get to where we need to be. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We in church right now. That's right. That's what we gonna do, baby. Yeah. That's what we gonna do. Elliot, what you got? Some other stuff? Yeah. Um. Hey, Derek. How, how many more years do you want to keep uh, fighting? Uh, it, it just depends, you know. Um, three to five, three to five years, you know, three to five years. Five, five will be on on the high, but three years again. My 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 process and, and what I have to do and is getting to that next level. It's not going to take me as long as it would take a, a, a just a regular contender, you know. Um, most of the time, when you're a former champion, you can petition. And some of these people, you know, if my last name was Clisco, I'll be champion. I'll come out of retirement as champion. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, I I need to take a couple of fights before I get to that point. But I, I think I'll be all right. And I, I think within I know within 2013 I'll, I'll be champion, and then I defend the title, defend the title, and then within three to five years, um, me and Jeff we're gonna chill out. I'm gonna chill out. I'm just gonna go and visit Jeff. <laughs> you know. No more fighting. We're going to smoke some weed. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No, I ain't going to never do that. I can't do that, man. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Jeff just started doing that the other day. He won't stop it. He's been stoned for three days straight now. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Man, you ain't going to smoke this, man. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> no, nah, I ain't going to be able to do that, man. That's, that's okay. If I did that, I wouldn't make 140, man. I could I could make my weight, man. You be snacking too much, right? Yeah, I'm sure, man. I'm sure. That's crazy. It ain't the weed. It ain't the weed. It's the weed. <laughs> oh my goodness! I I didn't go yeah, eat some weed. After that, we eat a lot yeah, of weed. I don't know if you know it, Derek, but but uh, Jeff turned into a big pothead since the last time you're here. So you need to be careful. Oh no, no, not Jeff. <laughs> not Jeff. <laughs> No, I, 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 I'm not buying that one. You, you just heard that. You just heard the bags are up one in the background, right? That was a Dorito. See, he just. Oh, I did. He's been snacking. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And, uh, I, and Derek, um, you know, 2013, you want to fight for a war title. 
Um, yes. Can you throw some names out there of, of, of you know, a few boxers that you would like to uh, step in the ring with? Man, I, I fight anybody. You, you look at my record. I've never turned down a fight. I don't. I turn down my collar. That's it. I don't. I don't turn down fights, man. I fight whoever has the title. Whoever has the title, I will fight them. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. You know, there's there's a there's a lot of good fights out there. There's a there's a very interesting fight that's going to take place in November. Broner. And the the Marcus, I think his name is. That's a that's a very interesting fight. Then you then you have um, the guy with the WBA. He's fighting. Um, I want to say um, the guy uh, Sharif. I think his name is. I think he's fighting yeah, for a title. Yeah. Out of the vacant title. So it's a man. There, oh, yeah. there are a lot of there are a lot of interesting fights that were out there. One thirty five and one forty. So I, I don't I don't mind. I fight anybody, man. Fighters, we fight anybody. We don't turn down fights, man. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't believe in that. You need to, you need to get with him on, on Celestino. You know, your, your uh, once a, one, once a month fight pattern there would be something we can get Celestino doing. He's getting, having all kinds of trouble getting fights there for himself. So, you know, yeah. unfortunately, he's, you know, in kind of the same situation. You know, he's, he's getting up there, but he just can't get a, can't get a fight. So he's been inactive for quite a while. So, trust, trust me, as as featherweight champ, I, I can, I can, re, I can relate. I had one guy that mentioned my name as featherweight champion, so I can understand mm-hmm. that. You know, but what he might want to do is what, what I, I don't mind doing right, right now to just get going, just take fights, just fight. Because you know, the, the thing about it for me, um, being inactive and not fighting, it, it hurts you more than, than anything, you know, especially, it, I'm able to be sharp, you know, by taking fights, so, you know, going back to training and, and you know, right back for this fight in December, I, I mean, it felt like I just, you know, I, I feel great, you know, I, I, didn't, I don't, you know, I wasn't hurt or sore or anything like that, I just feel great, man, so mm-hmm. I, I think I perform better once I'm, as long as I'm staying active. I know it's a little late out there in Florida, so before we let you go, though, one more thing. You know, Jeff's a great storyteller. Unfortunately, he never tells the stories on the on the radio here. So, do you, you got any good story or or anything you know interesting that happened between you guys in the past you want to share with us? Man, no, man. Uh, no, the only thing that was crazy was his phone going off like that. That was <laughs> that was it, man. His his phone, you know, all the text messages. His phone went. You know, went 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 dead from all the text messages, and and oh, and he sweet real, he snores real loud when he's driving in the car. <laughs> he went to sleep on me, and he snores real loud. That that was it, pretty much. Well, now we know the texts are probably all from his dealers, apparently, and uh, and the and the ladies. <laughs> you right about that. Give me the keys, baby. Give me the four of the keys. You right about that. All right, Jeff. Jeff, what about you? Any anything you know fun, interesting as far as working with with Derek? Well, I mean, I mean, me and Derek is competitive, you know, in in our even in our training, we're competitive. Of course, you know, my job is to try to tighten up the defense any way I can, and of course, you know how I do that. And basically, <laughs> you know, his challenges and his challenges also is to you know to to make me miss. And you know, and also, you know, the, um, so I mean, it's just a, it's just an ongoing challenge all the time, you know. And I, but I mean, it's, it's fun and spirited. Yeah, no doubt. No all doubt. Right, well, uh, I really appreciate you taking time with us, and Derek. Uh, you know, it sounds like you got everything mapped out, and uh, you know, it, it, it's commendable because, like I said, you've been pretty inactive for the last few years. So to come back at forty years old, you know, and and, and looking to make your mark again, that's uh, really impressive, and. You know, working with Jeff. If anybody can can help you do it, it's him. Uh, tell the folks, you know, where they can keep up with you. You got Twitter, Facebook, that kind of thing. I do. I'm on. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter also. Um, it's it's your, my name. Your Twitter. Derek Smoke. Go ahead. Oh, oh did you say your Twitter though. You got that that block on it, so you got to get approved by it, right? I don't know how to take that off. I uh, wish you, I wish, oh, you, you, I wish you, you could tell me how to take that off. Well, you can't do. Oh, I know. One of our uh, people, Elaine, that works with us, she had the same problem. If you use it on your phone, you can't do it there. Apparently, it's got to be on your on your desktop I'm, computer. On my you desktop. That. I, I have yeah, my laptop. You, so just log in on my laptop and try it. Yeah, yeah. Log in your laptop and go to the settings, and then yeah, knock it off of private there. Because I tried to add you yesterday, and it said I had to get approval approval there from you. Yeah, so, that, that, yeah. Yes, I had a lot of people that um, 
that emailed me and told me the same thing. So I need to do that. Because I tried to do it on my phone. You're right. It wouldn't let me do it. So I'm, on, on Twitter, I'm Smoke Gainer. Um, on Twitter, I'm going to take the block off. And then on my um, Facebook, it's just Derek Smoke Gainer. All right. And then anything else you want to, you know, tell the people that are following you, a message for anybody? No, I mean, just um, everybody tune in. I'll be fighting December 6th. Um, I guess a undefeated fighter from um, Houston. Um, the fight will be a Ustream fight. Uh, Ustream um, for as far as Fight Camp TV. Um, and um, I'm coming back, baby. That's it. You know, I appreciate the support of all my fans. Thank you guys for having me. Jeff, I'll see you soon. Um, I'm going right. to tell, tell, tell your reels up when I see you, man. <laughs> just just don't be near him any time you're going to be testing for anything. You don't want any of the fumes to get to you. Oh, man, no. My man, I ain't worried about that. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> Thank you, man. Right. Ellie, do you have anything for Derek before he goes? Uh, Derek, um, you know, I wish yeah. you the best on you know, your next fight. We'll be watching yeah. and... Um, you know, hopefully we can get you back on the show, and thanks a lot. All right, man. Thanks for having me, man. I'll most definitely come back. Yeah, we'll get you back after your next uh, your next victory there in December. And, yeah, thanks again. I really appreciate having you on, and and, and best of luck to you. You know, it's, uh, it's it's great to see you back in there. I know you have a lot of fans that have missed you over the last several years, so, so best of luck to you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. All right. Jeff, you know, I'm, right. I'm going to let you send him out again, so I'll let you do with Larry Holmes. You can send out Derek there. You ready? I'm ready. ready? Go ahead. Oh. Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all he gets. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes. Why is that? That's it. <laughs> You see what I have to work with here, Derek? This is terrible. Man, it's horrible, man. Man, later, man. Yeah, you you, you can tell someone, oh, this is one of your guys. You're just going to say bye. You're not going <laughs> to. That's my signature. Man, later, man. I thought of y'all next okay. time, man. Later. All right. <laughs> All right, so. Appreciate it, Derek. Take care. All right, so that was uh, Derek Gaynor, former and uh, hopefully future champion. Uh, great of him to, to join us. And earlier, obviously, we had uh, the legendary Larry Holmes. Thanks so much to him. Uh, he had the days confused. He actually thought he was coming on yesterday, so so he even took his time off from the, watching the debate. So we really appreciate having him on. Uh, Elliot, thanks for joining us. Uh, tell the folks where they can follow you and what you got going on. Yeah, I've... Uh Anyone wants to follow me, keep up with some boxing news for a pro boxing insider, follow me at uh, Vicious Vasquez. And on, on Facebook is just my name, Ali Vasquez Torres. And if anybody wants to check out my blog and comment, I always uh, return all my comments. It's uh, simply the boxing polls dot web, uh, excuse me, boxing polls dot wordpress dot com. And thank you. I appreciate having you. And then, uh, you know, I'll do the honors for you, Jeff, since you'll just say bye. Uh, you can follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff Mayweather One, and uh, you know follow us both on uh, on our Facebook page. It's Jeff Mayweather's Pro Boxing Insider, so follow us there. Uh, Jeff, you know just last thoughts on the night, and Derek or Larry, anything you want to add? Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. And uh, it, uh, every Tuesday night, seven o'clock central, we'll beyond. Thanks to ATG Radio. Just uh, moved over there. Last week was our first week, so thanks so much for uh, to them for for allow us, allowing us to be on their network. And uh, we will see everybody next week. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next week. One more time, Jeff. Bye.